guys, welcome to the AI Art Society YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get onto the Mid Journey beta and eventually create some cool art like the ones I'm showing you here. All right, let's get right into it. So first things first, you're going to want to go on Mid Journey. Just search that up into Google and then you're going to want to apply for the beta. Doing this, you're going to type in a bit of your info, where you're coming from, why you're using it. If you have any kind of social media, you're going to plug it there. Obviously, the more legit you look, if you have followers and a good reason for using the app, you're going to get on it in a week or two tops. Um, if you don't, you're probably not going to get on it. So yeah, have a good reason. And you're going to soon be able to see some cool art like this right here. Now, next we're gonna jump to a couple ways we can use the algorithm to make photos look better than other people's using it. Um, so we can say certain phrases that will render the picture in cleaner ways, in different ways, either 3D or more of like a matte paint style. Whatever you're going for, you really have to work with the system just using words. Now, the interesting thing about Mid Journey is everything you see here is just public. It is public by default. You can pay an extra $20 per month to have it private, which brings you up to about $50 a month. It's not a free service, only for the first period when you get it. So for, for me, it was for like the first day before I used up all my GPU time and it asked me to start paying for it. So let's hop right into the plans because I'm sure you're wondering how much they are. All right, so here are the plans right here. The free trial just gives you 25 minutes. So you use that up. Like I said, I use it up in the first day. Then you can hop on to the basic plan. That's just the one I'm right on right now. Uh, I'm going to use it up until it runs out. And then if I realize, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to use a lot more than this, like like let's say daily use or every other day, chances are you're going to need the standard one. The developers say that the basic is going to be perfect for people that just go on like with their kids, for example, uh, once, once or twice a week just to throw some cool images out there. If you're using it to produce images daily, if you're trying to get images with tens of 40 or 50 or 100,000 likes, these are people that are on it every day, finding the best ways to render them throwing them into certain programs afterwards, like Blender, Photoshop, to really make some crazy images. And you're gonna need a lot of practice with the program. So I'd recommend the standard if you're looking to use it for any kind of um, like heavy social media use, commercial use, etc. So what you're gonna do is hop into any of these rooms. I'll show you live. Sorry if anything crazy comes up. Like I said, it's gonna be public. And usually the craziest stuff comes up in, in Newbies 1. Everyone seems to be in this channel. But you're basically just gonna hop into any of these Newbies channel right here. I usually just pick a random one that's not crowded. Oh, these are pretty cool. And as you can see, some of the shots are just square. Other ones are in a landscape with like cinematic lighting and all the rest of it. So let's hop into uh, into chat here to see what we can create. And it, it, this is really where your imagination just gets set loose. So you're going to do slash I-M-A-G-I-N-E slash imagine. And then the prompt you're going to come up with is completely your own. So we can do crystal cave cafe and you can separate out certain things to add let's say vines and you want to see a lot of vines you can do dot so colon colon and then let's say 1.5 And by doing that, so it'll show like a 50% weight 
extra on vines, for example. Now you can also do minus one or minus 1.5 or uh, I think there's a dash dash no command in there as well. That'll be no vines. So there's interesting ways you can play around with the algorithm and we're gonna get into seeds as well. So you can create certain things multiple times or you can choose to create a new image every single time with the same exact prompt just by playing around with seeds. So we're gonna get into that very shortly. But lastly, I'm just gonna put cinematic lighting and I'm gonna lastly change, so dash dash AR, which is aspect ratio. And you can do something like 16 by seven. Sweet. And I always just like to throw a quick copy in there, just in case I mess up one letter or something doesn't go through, which it usually tells you. And then you just hit send. And as you can see there, it says waiting to start. I really do like that by default, everything's public because at the very least, it gives you just good ideas, things to type in, explore, and how people are doing things, these wide shots and different lighting styles. Like you wouldn't know any of this, but after tinkering out with the program for even a couple hours, you realize how the pros are doing it. Beautiful. So as you see, there's a, a bit of like a video there or like a GIF of it being created real time. And then once it's fully done, you'll usually get a notification on your phone or it's, if it's on your phone, you'll get a notification from Discord saying, bing, your image has been generated. There it is, beautiful. So as you can see, there's one, two, three, four images there in that landscape shot. And I love the cinematic nature of it, how it brings everything in the forefront and starts to blur out the background. Just, just beautiful, really. And so if you find one you really like, but you just wanna change up a couple things, you can do one of two things. The U you see here, so U1, two, three, four, stands for upscale one, two, three, and four. So if I really like, for example, three, I can upscale it. And I do, I'm jiving with, for example, one and two, but I wanna see a couple differences. You can do, for example, V1 and V2. So it'll change a couple things around. For example, it'll like change the lighting and where they are, it'll change the depth of field, it'll change what's on the table, or maybe like a different pattern in the back there. Different variations in each. Sweet. Yeah, beautiful. So if we click on those, just to the naked eye, I'm liking the top right one, so I'm just gonna do upscale one. This one's two, upscale two. Usually upscaling takes a little bit longer than creating variations. Oh, perfect. Beautiful. So right away, I'm loving the top left one there. So I'm gonna upscale that one. Sweet. What a shot. So there you have it. You have the Crystal Cafe. Now it looks like the vines weren't included at all, which is interesting unless maybe they took vines as wines and added some wine glasses. For example, a really good opportunity to use a different variation of it, because as you can see in the upscale here, it just added like random, it almost looks like chairs just like in the wall, but you know what? We'll forget about that one. This one turned out amazingly, oh my gosh. Let's try some new ideas. Let's go slash IDEAS and see what it puts out. Oh my gosh, look at this. So I'm seeing the second one here, the elder gods of the tree. So you can click that 
and immediately it just starts rendering it. There's no need to put in a whole new idea prompt or anything like that. Obviously, if you want to do something special, you could always copy it and then do, for example, slash. Imagine the elder gods of the tree, comma, Octane Render, which is like a very crisp engine for creating almost like uh, what you see in like those next level video games, those hyper-realistic video games. Unreal Engine 5, hyper-realistic. Cinematic lighting, AR, 16 by seven. Sweet. Now, sometimes I find it doesn't, there we go, there we go. Sometimes I find it doesn't actually do it. It just sends it as like a message instead of the, the prompt. So you have to click on like the, the word imagine. There we go. And it just highlights the whole thing in black, ready to send. And then you know it's working because it said ready to start. Did we get it? Yeah, there we go. We got it back. So this is with no classification of the aspect ratio, no classification of how we want the, the art style to be. And it comes up with some pretty cool stuff here. Oh my gosh. I always look at the, the shot. So for example, this one has the nice focal shot and it has some background blurred off in the distance. I love shots like those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upscale number two there. Now you see on some people's, there's in uh, quotations, it says relaxed. And I don't see it here, but I seen it in the last group. Ah, see how this one says metered fast? Sometimes it'll say relaxed. And what that means is that someone who has a premium subscription doesn't use any minutes. So for example, if they're cranking out like 200 images a day or an hour, but they don't wanna use through their full 200 hours immediately, what they can do is they can type in slash relaxed. And basically if the GPU has any free time where it's not being used or people are just kind of relaxed um, and it has more time to play around with, let's say, it'll send your images through kind of slower in the, um, in the queue, but you'll still get them. It'll just won't be immediate. Like usually within 50 seconds, you'll get your images. It might be like a, a two minute wait, for example. It might even be 50 seconds, but that way, if you have a premium subscription and you plan on just spamming a bunch of images, playing around with a ton of things, just grinding away at it, that's usually the best way to go. Now, if you have the $10 subscription, you can't do that. You use up your minutes regardless, uh, which just makes sense logistically. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, I'm loving the water reflections on number three there. So we're gonna upscale that bad boy. And you can see the difference in art style as well. This is almost like this um, sketchbook style. It's still pretty cool, people kind of gazing up at the tree. Oh man. Now, as you can see, there's a new option here. It says upscale to max. So this one's been upscaled, but just because of the aspect ratio, it hasn't been upscaled 100% the first go. So if we're like, okay, we really like this image. I like where everyone's standing. I like the colors, everything's nice. Then we can upscale that to max. As you can see, the only thing the AI has trouble with is usually faces. Uh, probably for like privacy reasons. Like you don't want to say like, let's say you're famous and somebody puts, oh, I want to see this famous person um, committing a heinous crime. <laughs> and then there's like this, this picture evidence of you doing something that's like completely illegal. So for that reason, they made the faces like clearly distorted. I'm sure for other reasons as well, but that's the one I can think of. 
And then secondly, signs. For some reason, signs are uh, distorted as well. Maybe for another reason, like they don't want to make um, like fake news. You know what I mean? Like forest fire in northern Canada or something like that. And then just have like the sign with like a massive fire behind it. And then all of a sudden people start freaking out when it's not even real. <laughs> so perhaps it could be um, just so like fake news doesn't get created. Oh, wow. See how it's upscaling to max? That's so beautiful. And some of the faces just, <laughs> they just don't work. Oh my gosh, look at that upscale to max. That is unbelievable. That looks like something straight out of like Witcher 3 Ultra settings as well. So I'll show you quickly what I do with the images afterward in Photoshop to make them look a little bit more in my Photoshop templates. I could find one that's a nice horizontal aspect ratio. Something like this. Now, if you're wondering where I got these, where it's so simple, you can literally just drag and drop your photo. Save it. And then boom, you have your image on like the subway, for example. So people are like, it's almost like a liminal space where people say, hey, I've, I've been in a place like that before, but I definitely didn't see an image like that there. That is wild. What is that doing there? So it, it kind of meets the disbelief of mid-journey with the reality of the modern world, which is kind of cool. So if you're looking for any of these, the website that I go to is Envato Elements. And then I just search um, photo display, and I believe it's in graphic templates. And yeah, here, here's a bunch right here. So you can have them, um, if it's like a drawing, you can have it, for example, on this real realistic looking frame in a house or over a couch. Um, on your Apple CarPlay, like there's there's so many different ones on here. Um, I prefer like the outdoor like advertising spaces because where I post them on my Instagram, AI Art Society, you'll see them normally in these frames. Wow, look at that. That is just stunning all created within a couple minutes of uh, mid-journey. So I hope I taught you guys a couple lessons on how to get in, a couple of different prompts to use. In future videos, we're gonna mess around with the different weights. We're gonna mess around with the video function. So you actually get sent a video of it being created, which is really cool. And then um, some other different tools and useful prompts that I found to create some really unique looking images. Yeah, I'm going to be using this program quite a lot for AI Art Society. If you haven't already, please hop on the AI Art Society page on Instagram slash AI Art Society and check out the work on OpenSea. We are selling each and every one of these as well as all my past ones that I've used a couple different programs for as NFTs to help support me and any other artists who submit their photos that want to be posted on AI Art Society. So come on over, join the society. And if you have any other questions or want anything else covered in the next episode, please drop it in the comments below. I'll be reading all the comments in the next 24 hours. Have yourself a great day, guys. Take care.